Okay. Hi, I'm Alan from West Coast Outdoor Adventure, and uh, the state of the world it is right now, uh, in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We're getting calls to uh, ship an occasional boat uh, to customers uh, as new, so fully wrapped up. So today I'm going to go through the whole process, uh, start to finish, of uh, unwrapping the kayak, fully, fully assembling the kayak, and going through the whole process of all the features of each one. Uh, I have in front of me a 2020 Revolution 13, and um, we will go through it uh, start to finish. It will also prove useful uh, in the future to refer back to. It's a lot of information when you first get one of the new Hobies, a lot of features uh, that are not in a, obviously a standard kayak. So you're about to refer back to this uh, as a new owner uh, anyway. Just to remind you of one of the two points, why things are here and uh, what they can do. So all you'll need pretty much to do the job is eventually you'll need a uh, Phillips screwdriver to put the seat together and open the kayak we always uh, recommend scissors over a knife. It's pretty easy to, if you have a sharp knife on the plastics they come wrapped in, to uh, put a nasty little scratch in uh, right out of the box. And uh, it's not a great way to start your kayak. So, scissors, a bit of time, unwrap the plastic, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, so, So down, uh, if you can see down in here, what holds the Mirage Drive um, in when it's assembled, down in there, is the release. Put a little pin to it, just hold everything in place for the minute. So just put that pin forward, on the other side, pin forward, see under there at all. And then the Mirage Drive is just held in with this piece of plastic and a uh, zip tie. So, it's a big piece of plastic, discard that, not need that anymore. Just and then the off. Zip tie, they can recycle these guys. So, first thing we want to do with uh, the drive itself is check its function. So, a couple of protective plastic pins inside in here. So, obviously, just make sure it's got its full motion here, pins together to operate the uh, Mirage Drive itself, this must go, go through that from here. So in a normal operation, you're just going to be pedaling backward and forward and backward and forward on your Mirage Drive. It's adjustable for all different leg lengths through the, uh, through the numbers here. You can see the numbers in here. And to adjust those, just push the plastic button at the top, bring it towards you for uh, shorter legs or further away for longer legs. Make sure they're both on the same number and uh, that's it to go. Foot straps, you can use them or not, they just come off, they're adjustable. Some people do like the foot straps, hold their foot into place. Some people like to move your foot around, uh, moving it from different parts. You can actually, uh, from your toe to the middle of your foot, you can actually, I find, uh, can stop or help prevent uh, leg cramps and that sort of a thing. Um, just been able to slightly engage different muscle groups. 
to uh, put it into reverse, your feet do have to be together. And it's just basically a pinky pull, it's not too much more than that. Pinky pull, uh, if it's loose, if the uh, shifter is loose there, then that's the gear it's in. If you're out in the boat, you're not sure which gear you're in. But otherwise, just a pinky pull, and it should just pull forward and reverse. Simple as that, brand new. You need to stop to loosen up a little bit. Uh, and that just ensures it's, it's engaging properly. You must keep it clean and rinsed. Uh, salt water and fine sand can get in amongst the, uh, this, the near the boom where it pivots, uh, going into reverse. And even if you take it out of salt water and don't rinse it, that salt seems to crystallize and can make it quite stiff. So just make sure it's rinsed well with fresh water. Uh, if for some reason in the future you find it is stiff and it won't engage, just soak the whole thing in water. You'll find, oh, I've never had one that's not, you'll find they always sort of uh, um, will free up. These have the 2020s, have the kick up fins. So if you hit anything, and there you go, that one's a bit stiff. We can adjust that. I'll show you how to adjust that just next. But if you hit something, they'll sort of kick up out of the way. And then as you pedal in water, they will lock back into place. A bit a little stiff, like that, like that. Now there is a small Allen key uh, in the front of the boom here. Now that can actually adjust, or really completely lock out, your kick up uh, tension, or you kick up how easy it kicks up and flops back into place again. So you just loosen that off if you want to um, go back into a set position a little more easily. Some of them are a bit tight out of the box, and if you hit something, it won't just lock into place fully. So I'll adjust this one just in a moment for you, when get those bits out. Still tight. Oh, not too bad. It's pretty good now. So, that one, let's see that one just a touch. It's the end of here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Bang. And it just pops. You see how it's, just, it's take a bit of a bang to get it out, but it just it goes back in relatively easily. And that's how you want it. You don't want to just fall out of anything. But a bit of a bang. Goes back in very easily. And the other thing with your drive is just take a note of pretty much what the tension's like out of the box because that's the tension you're probably going to, going to want to keep throughout the life of the Mirage Ride. It's adjustable just on these um, cables with a 7 16 or 11mm uh, nut on the end of the cables here. You want to check on those uh, periodically. Okay, so going back to the, uh, the boat itself. Finish unpacking it. I'm going to paddle. Pretty straightforward, obviously. Just uh, put the paddle out, put it together. See if he's practiced for that. Now, literally, the only thing you'll have to put together is the seat itself. So, the seat is um, just sort of when you get it, it's, it's the end of the air, I hope. It's just sort of wedged uh, under the adjuster, the height adjuster there. And uh, you just need to unpick it out from there. You see, it's in two pieces, it's going to have to screw together. Just pop it down pretty easily. You see how it lines up, they just line up with each other. Underneath the base of the seat in this little packet is the two screws. So you just pop those two screws out. And uh, that's what you need to fill a screwdriver for. Cross the screwdriver, just line these up. I find I just line one up. Part of the threads on my fingers. Go through, line the other one up. Start it. 
one or two threads on our fingers. I have had in the past, I'll show you up here, with these screws, um, it's only very rarely I've come across it, but sometimes one goes in just fine, and then the other one doesn't feel like it wants to start. What you need to do in that situation is just get something, uh, a crescent wrench, something like that, and just twist the uh, seat base. No more than less than a sixteenth of an inch, a couple of mil, just to make sure it lines up properly. Uh, so you don't cross your threads when you're going in there. It should start a couple of threads and then it's got some Loctite uh, on there to stop them coming out. So once you get it started, then you can just get your Phillips screwdriver, get your head all along. Now your seat should be nice and even. These straps should be the same tension on each one. If it is not, if one's slightly longer than the other, at the base of the seat, it's going to be very hard to see, but it's under that rail and under there, what the string actually like goes onto in there is on a uh, hex key. I want to say it's 8 mil, 5 16th, I could be wrong, but it's a hex key. And you can wind that up or loosen it off and it will adjust the space strap length and on the, uh, the seat strap position. Uh, now the feature of the seat itself is uh, fairly straightforward. The quick release at the back here, it just lifts out and your seat will recline or come forward. You have a, a bar adjuster here for your lumbar support. Just wind that guy in uh, to tighten up the, the lumbar support on, on your back. To release it, just it just pops out. You feel it, it's a bit awkward when it's here, there you go, it just pops out. And you'll see it, put a bit of pressure on it, and it just unwinds. Pop back in again, click it in, put it how you, uh, what's comfortable for you. Use this little clip here that's going to clip into the back of the seat. In here, see the other side on the boat there. This seat's expensive. If anything does ever happen to it and it tips out and you lose it, it's a lot of money. Uh, we're here in Canada, it's over $700. So, sort of $500 down in the States at the moment. So, you don't want to spend all that for the sake of this little two second clip it in. I clip them in every time, 100% of the time, all the time, even though I know nothing's ever going to happen. It's just a simple little safety thing. It can save you a lot of money in the long run. Underneath the base of the seat, of course, it does turn into a deck chair. So it has the bungees under here. So you unrelease, uh, unclip the little bungee here. You've got little slots to line up. One, two, three, four. I won't go through them all, but obviously, well, I will, why not? One, two, three, four. And here we have, camera's not really it's very, very well, but you got a beach here, you can see it. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool if you're on a bit of a day trip. It's got little, uh, right it's got little uh, toggles in here for them to clip into. We start there, but really just the bungees around here. I find I don't use the toggles too much. Uh, sort of wears into the base of the seats after after a while. So the seats are pretty strong. But... So 
So that's the feature of the seat out. Into the boat. Come around on the side here. Just move its own as manual. Right, a lot of people struggle with this, uh, this seat going in. Underneath the base of the seat, right on the outside edge, is essentially an elongated uh, slot clip that the seat's going to go into. Right on the outside edge is essentially an elongated uh, slot clip that the seat's going to go into. Right below, right where, below the where the the guides are, right below where the sort of the safety strap guides are. So what I do is I open the seat up, line it up. Hope you guys can see this. So you line it up, just sitting there with the guides, and the sort of safety guides. You can't get your fingers caught anywhere. Lined up with the uh, with the seat. I then close the seat, or put the back down, and just use one hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that one hand, push down, the back's going to pull it up, and then I'm sort of going to go back and down at the same time. So it's really just put one hand up, hope this works the first time, bring you both. Back and down, sort of clunks in, lift it up, and then just lift, lift, it's locked in there. So to remove it, hopefully you guys can see this, if not I'll do it separately. To remove it, just repeat or reverse the procedure, huck up, come straight out again. A lot of people struggle with this, seat's not in properly, one side's in, one's not. Line it up, line it up to here. Forward, see I'm not even using this hand, forward. I'm just holding a bit of pressure as I'm doing this, down. Pull it up and bang, 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 bang. Put it in there. It's completely locked up. So the other features of your seat is under the uh, base here. We have the little grey uh, pull strap. If you pull on that strap, that will allow the seat front to rise up on a little gear assembly. And we got the the front uh, risen up. You also have your little kickstand. See that anywhere here? Little kickstand uh, toggle, which will kick these little kickstands out of the back. First position, just there. Second position, way up high up here. It can feel pretty uh, unstable on a Revo once you're way up in the high position. But if you're standing up, you've got the side kicks on or anything like that. You're standing up and sitting down a lot. Really is a, a lifesaver. We can now that's locked in. Uh, right here we have a little grey uh, pull strap. If you pull on that strap, that will allow the seat front to rise up on a little gear assembly. And we've got the seat, the front's now risen up. You also have your little kickstand, you see that anywhere here? Little kickstand uh, toggle, which will kick these little kickstands out the back. First position, just there. Okay, now, so right we'll just run through our rudder operation. Um, let me take the seat out just so things can be seen okay. But, um, pretty much, it's pretty simple. You have your up and your down lines. Uh, so to uh, deploy your rudder down, make sure it's knocked out of a spongy, pull it down, and make sure it's locked in to this little cleat in here. Um, to release it, obviously, you can just uh, pop it out, release it, and pull on the up, to make sure it's up. It's just checking uh, the how uh, free it is. You can adjust all of this. We'll go back to that in a second. But you want to make sure it's locked down. If it's not locked down, if you're in an older boat, you might have had the, uh, you would have had the uh, little cleat in under here. 
to ensure your rudder is locked down. Everything is adjustable. So if you come back down um, the We just want to make sure it has its full range of motion, uh, left and right, uh, port and starboard, just to ensure that it is uh, has set right from the factory. 99% of the time they always are. You can adjust it on the two little screws back here. If you have to, loosen them off, tighten one, uh, loosen one off, just make sure it's lined up in the middle, so you stand in the back, or it's a straight line. Your handle on the Revolution, no different for each boat, but you see, it should see it lines up pretty much straight, and just make sure it's got its full range of motion left and right. As we're saying, everything is adjustable. Um, you'll find that if you were to move this little cap in here, then you could pop that off. This is a 14mm 716 um, bolt in there, hollow bolt. And you can loosen or tighten that. It's like no more than a quarter of a turn, even, even less. And it will adjust how the tension on the rudder here. So from the factory, uh, older boats especially, or previous years I should say, that was set fairly firm. Um, so people would be out there and after a year or two they'd find that they've never had it locked down before, they've never needed to. Everything's freed up a little bit and it's popping up on their own and uh, making, uh, having issues with suddenly I've lost all control, my rudder's broken, etc, etc, etc. And it's not, it's just because it's been set fairly firm, they've not had it locked down. I've had people phone me up, just tell them out there, lock it down under the cleat on the previous year model boat. Also, the um, pin at the back here, the rudder guide pin, is designed to break. So if you have that locked down, you head up on a beach or a rock or something, that's designed to break. And we have a spare rudder pin. I'm redoing this bit on the video. We have a spare rudder pin here. Um, I've moved it from the back to the front. So I like to put in there and a uh, little tackle box holder keeps it out of the way, keeps the lid stops it from pin from going anywhere. But it's there if you ever need it. You will see a spare one in here. So uh, back hatches at the bottom like this everything now. But this is your spare rudder pin. You're, You're out in the middle of the there on an island having lunch somewhere and you've launched and you've come up on the beach kind of hard, a wave's got you, that rudder pin's broken, what I'm going to do, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, of course I can just paddle back, I can just use my paddle as a rudder, um, but ultimately if you have a spare pin, it's two seconds, pop the other one out, keep the plastic, and uh, and pop the new one in, just goes under the little uh, rudder strings, rudder lines there, and away you go. Uh, right. We were then talking about our, so underneath the hull of the boat, you can see we have our fish finder plate, our cover plate here. We can just unscrew that off and you find it's the Rance fish finder ready. Everything's ready for the uh, Rance fish finder, because other people fit other fish finders. Uh, you can do a little bit of jimmy around to make it more fit. And the wiring will come up through your fish finder, up through this little hole in the back here back into the pre-drilled grommets and in your spare parts kit you'll have all these uh, little wiring grommets back in through the hull and depending on what boat you have obviously the revolution comes up either side here and you can mount whatever uh, fish finder mounts or other accessory rod holder mounts ram, scotty, uh, rail blazer um, you name them they're all Maybe have something to go on there. Um, and mount whatever you want. Some people use it for fishing, obviously. Some people just like to see the contour underneath them, the structures, that sort of stuff. Snorkeling, see a structure under there, might be a good place to go snorkeling. Uh, that sort of thing. So, um, I guess we were talking about your Mirage Drive next. So, the Mirage Drive. As it goes into the boat, it's going to line up with the guide pins we were talking about earlier. 
just drop straight in and uh, it self locks in here so everything's now self locked in here if you want to remove it you pull these pins uh, the cam locks towards you as you pull it up it's reset ready to go again so the pins are here everything's reset drop it straight in here bang you're all uh, locked in already set to go even if you flip it but these are not going to come out but of course you can put the a little safety leash on here, yeah. recommended to make guide pins with the two slots right in the middle of the, uh, the cam locks there. Our pins are either forward or back, doesn't really matter. Drop it straight down and it locks in. It's self-locked. So there's nothing else required now to do this. To unlock release it, remove your pin, remove your drive, you just pop those up toward the rear or towards you and now you can pull your drive straight out. As you pull it out, it resets these. So these are now set for your Mirage drive. Let's go back in one more time and it's locked. So all you need to do is pull those towards you uh, from when you're sitting in the seat and as you pull it up it resets. Simple as that. And then your Mirage Drive is in and locked in. Now the Mirage Drive locking cam locks are very A couple good. of other things uh, we didn't talk about was our, our mast receptacle for sailing our kayak. That's what that little uh, plug there is for. Just for your sail to go in here. And uh, for sailing it pretty cool fun to sail even the, the smaller hobby sails. always ask what these two little brass nut things are in here two little brass you can, a bit of shadow here Let's see if i can get a bit of a bit of thing That's, there they are there just underneath the seat here here and here they were just for molding making the kayak nothing more nothing less um just from the production of the kayak you have a couple of rod holders back here, torpedo tube uh, rod holders, little covers on them. Keep the water out, keep it in, whichever you're going to do there. And uh, there's a bit of a close up of our, of our seat uh, track, it runs up and down in our seat track there, so this seat going up and down. And of course, another one of our spare pin there's a spare rudder pin and a bottle holder bottle opener uh, we were talking about our serial number here if we didn't get that before there's a serial number of this particular boat a couple little close-ups uh, rudder pin there's our rudder pin here that just pops off pull the strings aside just pops off goes back in again here is that uh bolt to adjust the tension of the rudder here and these are your rudder um, left and right adjusters here everybody um hopefully that's if you just unpacked your new Hobie kayak because for whatever reason you haven't been able to collect your, your kayak in person at the, the shop or the dealer and you haven't been able to walk through everything with you or if it's a couple of years or a few months down the line and you did get a big walk through but as you can see there's a lot of information little bits and pieces uh, to take in hopefully this giving you some insight uh, to getting you comfortable with your boat so you know all the features uh, and the advantages of owning a Hobie kayak. Uh, just again, I'm Alan from West Coast Outdoor Adventure. We're in Souk, uh, British Columbia, BC, Canada. And uh, for those not familiar with the geographical location that we're in, we basically uh, share the same waters with uh, Washington State. So we're opposite the Olympic Peninsula, Washington State. We're just um, 
45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes outside of Victoria, which is the capital of British Columbia, beautiful port city on the water. Uh, we're in a small, mainly touristy town, but uh, our business and my business is located inside a resort, so we are physically on the water. So we have most Hobies from this year, Prangler uh, 360s, PA 360s, uh, islands, you can rent a uh, tandem island or an adventure island from us. We'll run through the whole thing with you, even have a bit of gear, which, uh, water can be a bit chilly when the wind's up. Um, through most models we have here to demo, uh, so obviously for our local market, demo before you, you buy them. Or if you're here on vacation, welcome everybody, uh, come to Super Vacation, it's a gorgeous area, lots of hiking, kayaking, fishing, swimming, uh, biking, numerous. Um, but obviously if you come on vacation, you're thinking maybe going back home, wherever in the world you're from, and I purchased in the Hobie, and locally you don't have uh, access to a, a dealer or demo days, a few and far between. And every day is a demo day down here with us.